Technical University in partnership with Cyber Security Authority to addressing the gaps surrounding cyber security and also adopting a multifaceted approach to tackle the talent and skills shortages in Ghana's cyber security ecosystem. And the authority runs what we call a point of contact, which allows citizens to call and report cyber security incidents or any cyber crime they've encountered. You can call 292. Or you can send us a WhatsApp on 050-160-3111. And so far this year, we've recorded well over 9,200 cases or calls that have come to us. Out of that, around 22%, which comes to around 2,033 of them, were classified as incident, meaning something, uh, some crime or some incident has actually been determined to have occurred. Now, when we do the analysis, we are able to categorize them into some uh, groupings. So, top of that list is online scams. So, online scams involve the shopping scams that some of us um, experience. You have job scams, and this accounts for about 43% of these cases. You also have what we call unauthorized access. The most popular version is where people's WhatsApp account is, is hacked or the uh, other social media accounts are taken. That accounts for 20%. Now we also talk about online blackmail, which is where a lot of the people suffer what we call sextortion. Somebody is deceived to share their nude pictures or videos and then somebody else comes back and says, oh, I have your video. If you don't pay me so so and so amount, you have to, you, 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 it will be, it will be put out there. So that comes about 18% of the cases. And then we have cyberbullying, where you have um, this companies that are offering loans on mobile applications. It's not sanctioned by the Bank of Ghana or for, by any regulator for that matter. This accounts for 9%. Now what we also do is we track what the losses are, how much money was lost. Last year we lost around 49 million Ghana cities. This year so far we have already accounted for 20 million Ghana cities lost in all kinds of uh, scams. And so these are the things we have noticed. In terms of what we are doing about it, um, Awareness creation is one of our biggest tools. The thing is, when people are not aware of what these scams are like or how they are done, they tend to fall victim. So what we do on a monthly basis is that we create public alerts that we put out on our website, on our social media handles. We do radio and TV shows where we are able to explain, okay, in the past few months we have seen this kind of scam, this is how it is done, this is what you can do to avoid falling victim. That's one of the things we do. We also raise awareness by going to high schools to educate our young people how to stay safe online. We engage other public sector institutions as well in terms of educating the, the staff. These are the things to look out for, this how to protect yourself. And uh, in terms of the actual uh, investigations we do, when we have evidence, we work with the law enforcement agencies. We have a unit that is dedicated to an, an what we call liaison duties. We work with CID, we work with the police to effect arrests where, where, where we have gathered enough evidence that can be prosecuted. The authority is committed to developing, or one of our mandates is to develop the ecosystem and therefore we have a number of uh, initiatives that are ongoing. Next week we'll be launching what we call the Industry Forum. The Industry Forum will bring together stakeholders that would be able to support the authority in the development of other initiatives that would help to develop the ecosystem. We are doing a licensing accreditation which is geared towards sanitizing the ecosystem in terms of who are the people practicing. And we have multiple awareness campaigns that go on. So our students follow us on our social media handles, pay attention to the alerts that we put out there so that you are safe online. You have to remember that your cyber security is your own responsibility, therefore your activities online are going to have an impact. So it's good to be aware what to do and not to do online. Um, definitely pay attention to what we are doing. There are other initiatives in terms of learning opportunities that the authority will be putting out there in partnership with other stakeholders and other uh, service providers. Today we have a cyber security awareness program on campus. 
Let me say that we are in a month where we are celebrating at the national level the cyber security awareness. It's quite uh, important that we begin to think about the countermeasures for cyber attacks and threats because uh, the vulnerability are just increasing. Let me say with the growth of the um, digital technology and the adoption of digital solutions to most of our um, life challenges, uh, the growth of cyber vulnerability and threat is also something um, we can overemphasize. So the need therefore to raise awareness and to put in institutional measures to counter the number of counter um, cyber attacks we are receiving. Today the statistics as presented by the Cyber Security Authority shows that there is an alarming growth of fraud that is still happening and this is mainly due to lack of awareness from people and then lack of uh, measures to counter some of them. So in today's discussion we profile solution to some of the problem. We raise awareness and share information with uh, the general public and we realize that there is a need uh, for educational institutions, especially at the tertiary level. There is a big role for us to play by developing training packages backed by the, uh, the Cyber Security Authority to address some of the needs, for instance, in forensic, in AI, in cyber defense, to prepare the mind of the people to resist some of the attack and then also to prevent others into getting, uh, to becoming victims of most of these attacks. I think we will further this symposium today by actions, trying to deepen our relationship with them and setting a program in those regards to address the need. Uh, this is the second time that we are organizing this cyber security program, uh, awareness program on campus. We did it last year and we began our partnership with the, uh, the cyber security authority in the same year. I must say it has been a very fruitful collaboration as we participated in most of the events, uh, in, I mean including the competition for tertiary students and other activities. Uh, it's been good so far, but we think that we can go a step forward by establishing program that have accreditation and license with them to train people in those regards. Implication for students and lecturers are clear. This presents a lot of opportunities. Number one, lecturers may have to upgrade themselves to be able to integrate some level of cyber security teaching in all their courses. Also at the institutional level, we are looking at how to integrate this in the curriculum. There are design courses to train people in, in modern um, realities like uh, artificial intelligence, cyber security and co. We need to look at the content of those courses to meet the need of the, the industry. For students, this also presents an unprecedented opportunity. If you are able to establish some of the training and students have, um, have gone through those training and they are certified, then they, they can equally compete for job just here or, and also globally and earn very huge salary. I think the students mainly stand a bigger chance because even if you are a student at ATU and you are not undertaking cyber security as a course, we still want to integrate some level of awareness in other existing course so that at least you have some level of awareness to be able to act as a, a cyber defender. But beyond this, um, if you take the cyber security course uh, with the collaboration we are deepening now, you should be able to compete globally with cyber security experts and you know that today's reality uh, put a lot of money, a lot of earning into those kind of jobs. Thank you for watching Nation One TV. Kindly subscribe for more news updates.